This video is going to cover adding more slash commands to our application, which will allow us to type stuff like slash DND to uh, set ourselves to do not disturb, slash away to go away, slash online to go online, etc. So the basic premise for this is just continuing off of the previous episode where we set up the command parsers. Uh, but we're going to take it a little bit further and we're going to clean up our code a little bit. So to start, we'll come into our controller and our messages controller. And what we're going to do in here is we're going to grab everything outside of the create method down to the uh, private down here. We're going to cut this and then we'll just put another private right here. That way we can keep our message params as a private access modifier and then the rest of our stuff can go into a concern. You can also put this into a helper. It is a bit of a Rails convention to just make up wherever these things go and then act like it matters. Uh, but the basic idea is it, it's just a file. You just put it in either file. It doesn't matter. In this case, I'm going to put it in the concerns. And I'm just going to call this the message parser.rb. The thing with all these conventions is at the end of the day, it's just a, uh, <laughs> it's just a preference. The code still works. Uh, and if you end up working somewhere and they have different preferences, they'll just tell you it's not, not something you need to worry about that much. Uh, but okay. So we come in here, we paste in our code. And then at the top where we have the module, we can just say extend active support colon colon concern. And then we have all of our commands here. So the reason why we're doing this is because this allows us to come into our controller and then in our controller, we can just say, uh, let's include the message parser. And that'll give us access to all those methods just like we had before, except now they're in a separate file. If you were to put this in a helper, just like we have it with the messages helper, uh, if we come into the messages helper, it's the same deal. It's in a module, it's called messages helper. It has this stuff and then we just include it. And that's sort of why it doesn't really matter. I mean, at, at the end of the day, it's just going into a different file. It's called something differently. It functions slightly differently, but for the sake of what we're doing here, it's just a helper method. So we'll put in a concern and then we'll uh, come into our create method where we have our parse slash commands. Uh, because here, what we want to do instead of just parsing them, is we're going to want to grab something from this. We'll say this is the should create message, set this equal to the parse commands. And then if that returns, uh, oops, if that returns a Boolean, we can then return early. So we're just doing this to make sure that we don't save our message if we don't want to. That way we're not sending uh, stuff like this slash DND here into the chat room. So this allows us to return early before the save. Now the caveat here is we don't want to do a messages dot uh, build here. We want to convert this to a message dot new. If it's messages dot build, when we come into the message parser and we update the user's status, it'll also save this message if it's associated as a messages dot build because it's going to update everything on the user model. So by setting this to be a message.new, it's no longer attached to the user model. So if the user model gets saved, the message doesn't get saved. That also stops us from doing double broadcasts here, which is nice, just a nice side effect. So we can come into our message parser now that we have that, and we just want to add in some extra logic. We had the random manager and the help manager, and these are just some pretty basic commands. So here what we'll do is we'll just say should return message set this equal to a status manager, oops, status underscore manager, and we'll pass in the command. And then at the top here, we can do something like should create message. We'll set it to true by default. And then in this one case, we'll just override it. And then we can come down here and we can say return should create message. And then when I save this, it'll probably get rid of the return uh, at some point. If it gets rid of the return, it's just returning the variable still. It just likes to have this weird uh, no return statement where the, the return isn't there, but it's implied that it's returning whatever is on the last line. I don't personally care for it because the readability is not great, but the uh, gem I have installed just decides to do some formatting there, which is a little weird. But okay, we have that. We can now come in and create this status manager. We'll do this right below, I guess, the uh, random manager, keep things a little bit organized. So below the random manager, we'll say def status manager, pass in the command. 
And then in here, what we can do is one of those really gross uh, switch cases. We'll just do a case for zero, and then we can say when, and then we'll need a couple different variables here. We can grab these from our set command down here. And I'm just going to copy and paste these in because they're really not that interesting. But below the random, we'll add a at DND for do not disturb, away, online, and offline. And they'll all correspond to their equivalent slash commands. And then for the uh, command options down here, we can add these same things. We'll just paste in these four. And then we can just say, um, I guess my formatter doesn't like this. But we can just say this DND set yourself to do not disturb or set your status maybe is a better way to say it. Set your status to do not disturb and then we'll copy this, we'll paste it four times. And then we can just say set your status to away, set it to online and then set it to offline. There we go. So that gives us all those and now we can come up here and what we can do is just say when the thing is at DND, we can also do a when it is at away, when it is at uh, offline is the order I had it in and then when it is online. And because Ruby doesn't have the cascading uh, conditionals here, you don't have to worry about doing a break in your switch cases. So in other languages where you get to the end of your switch case, you have to put in like a break so that it gets out of here. If you don't have the break, it'll then go into the next case uh, by default. Here, you don't have to worry about that. Whether that's a feature or a bug, I don't know, but uh, we'll use it to our advantage here. Saves us a little bit of typing. So when we have the uh, at DND here, we actually need to do two things. The first thing is we're gonna create a new status and we're gonna set this equal to whether or not the user is already set to do not disturb. If they're already set to do not disturb, then we're gonna wanna put the status for the uh, user to be online. Otherwise, we're gonna want it to be do not disturb. And this means we have to come into our user model and inside of our user.rb, we have to find our statuses enum. Oops, status, there we go. And at the end here, we'll just put in a DND. We can then come down to our status to CSS, and then we can just come right below offline and just say when DND, we'll set it to be danger. Uh, danger, I think, is another one of those bootstrap classes that should just set it to a red color and it just comes with it by default. Then we can come back over to our message parser and we can finish up what we're doing here. So now that we have this new status, we can update the user to have that status. And then we can do a similar thing for when the user is away. So we just check if the user is away, then we set the status to online, otherwise we set the status to away. And then we can just update the user from there. Now the last two are the offline status, which is actually just going to set the offline status and then the online status. And the reason why we're just setting the offline and online status is because if you're already uh, set to do not disturb, we do not wanna change your status no matter how many times you click. If you're already set to away, we just wanna set you to online because those are kind of the two states you can be there. Uh, but you can set yourself to offline for many of these states and you can set yourself to online for many of these states. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, because of how much we check for the online statuses right now, you could probably also just get rid of the uh, the away status there and just replace it with the actual user statuses call. And that's just because, I mean, every time you click anywhere, it's going to be sending a update because we're like compulsively checking. Uh, so I think the only one you actually need this for is probably the do not disturb one. But okay, we get through all this, and then at the end here, we just return false. And the reason why we're returning false here is because this is one of the commands where we don't want to uh, print the message body to the screen. So when I do something like slash DND, I don't want it to appear in the chat. If I do something like slash random one and two, I would like that to print to the chat course we don't have everything set up right now but you get the idea so now that we have that uh, the next thing we can do is we can come over to our appearance channel so inside of our channels we have the appearance channel we can come down to the bottom here and this is uh, a little bit weird but essentially 
we want to check if the user is set to do not disturb. If they're set to do not disturb, we do not want to broadcast another update. If the user is set to a different status, then we're good to broadcast an update. So what, what we can do here is we could set this to do a check to figure out if the user is uh, set to do not disturb. So we can come to the end here and we could say, unless the uh, current user is set to do not disturb. But uh, as I just spoiled here, uh, one of the issues with this is the current user status when you get here is gonna be not set to do not disturb regardless of what you do. Uh, so what you actually have to do first is you have to get a uh, updated reference to the current user. You can do this just by running a user.findby and grabbing the user ID. That will then give you a uh, copy of the user that actually has their status set to do not disturb. Otherwise, you just keep getting back a ways or uh, on lines when you're trying to do this. So that handles that weird little edge case. We can then, uh, I mean, we can then just give this a shot. We can refresh. We can then try slash DND. That sets us to do not disturb. If I click, I'm not being reset. I can set myself to away. That works too. If I click though, I'm, I'm set back to online. You could add more checks here if you'd like, but uh, I think this is the way it works in most applications. Let me set myself to offline. It'll toggle the offline and then I can set myself to, uh, let me do slash DND and then slash online. That'll set me back to online. Now, one thing to note, if I type slash DND twice, it sets me back to online. But if I type slash DND and then I click, nothing happens. But if I refresh, you'll see that right away it sets me back to online. And the reason for that is inside of our controllers and our rooms controller. Uh, inside of our rooms controller, we have a uh, we have a set status method. And what we can do in here is we can just say we uh, want to return if the uh, current, oops, current underscore user dot DND question mark. And then that'll just do a check to see if the user is currently set to do not disturb. And if they are, then we won't change their status. So we come over here now, we can set ourselves to DND like that, refresh, and now that'll work just fine. Now let's test a message. So I'll say a message, I'll hit enter, and you can see the user must exist. So we're getting an error there. So that error is coming from our messages controller because we're now creating a new message instead of building it off of the user. We now simply need to add the user ID to this message. And by doing this, we can then come over here and we can say test two. And now if we refresh, because we have to refresh to make sure everything works, now we see test two. So I'll say another one. And there is our another one. Let's just test a message attachment real quick. I'll just send a uh, thumbnail. So yeah, now you have a way to set yourself to away or to slash DND uh, and navigate between rooms without the uh, settings getting messed up for you. So yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully this was helpful and hopefully I'll see you in the next tutorial.